Welcome back. We spend a lot of time talking about the presidential race, but we don't always spend quite as much time as we should thinking about what might happen on the other end of the finish line. Officials from the UN indicated earlier this month that the city of eastern Aleppo may be totally destroyed by the end of the year and is sure to be a headache for the next U.S. president. Colin, is there light at the end of the tunnel in Syria? That is an almost impossible question to answer, and I don't know, honestly, at this particular point in time that we are going to be able to play a constructive role. So, you know, I, one of the criticisms that I could offer for the current administration is that we drew this fictitious line into sand and we did not stand up for it. So one of the lessons in foreign policy always is that you have to stand by, by the promises or, and or threats that you make. And we, our, our, our failure to abide by promises certainly has created a lot of the travails that we have in foreign policy currently vis-a-vis -vis some of the mistakes we made after the Afghanistan war and the Soviet invasion was repelled and some other things. But um, Aleppo is, a, a, is a, the embodiment of the Syrian regime's attempt to rid itself of opposition. As it happens, uh, al uh, the, the president of Syria um, is in bed metaphorically speaking, with, with the Russian government. And it, Syria has always been a Russian client. This is not something new. Um, Syria, or Russia rather, sees a strategic ad advantage in supporting the al-Assad regime. We have done nothing aside from maybe arm a few rebels and maybe throw a few dollars over there. At this particular point in time, really the next administration and we as a country need to make a decision whether we are going to back the opposition or just get the heck out of there because we're not doing anything productive in, in our current stance. Ken, listen to what uh, Colin just said. Debecky just fell. Yeah. Debecky is a major part of this whole battle in Syria. I find that there's far more going on in Syria by the U.S. with U.S.-led forces. Debecky, I think, was part of ISIS's magazine, okay. which is called Debecky. That magazine's called Debecky. Debecky has fallen. Some of the things that's happened in Aleppo is far greater than what I think a lot of folks really understand, led by U.S. Uh, yeah. guidance. Well, you know, and you know, you ask Colin if, there, if there's light at the end of the tunnel. There may be light at the end of the tunnel, but that also may be an oncoming train. Uh, you know, the, Russia has warned the U.S. basically, hey, you keep your uh, your planes out of this, or we're going to shoot them down. And I, you know, to be honest, That's, I would I would love to know, see are that they confrontation. Bluffing? I don't know. The minute that Russia shoots down one of our planes, it's, it's going to force us into something that we should have done vis-a-vis -vis Russia a long time ago, which is grow some backbone. We have allowed Putin to become the bully that he has become because honestly, we haven't had a backbone to stand up to him, and. Agree or disagree with the stance that led us through the Cold War? Uh, appeasement doesn't work. Uh, it didn't work right. for for the British and the French before World War II. Sure, sell didn't work for the Czechs or the Poles, um, mostly because the British and the French sold them out. But and it didn't work for us until we got bombed at Pearl Harbor. Um, at some point or another, we are going to be headed into a confrontation with Syria as a sideshow. Whatever we decide to do there is part of a much broader. Why should we game. even be there? What business do we even have in Syria? Well, now I'm sure we, we are. Kind we, of we contributed to right, it. Right, we so. contributed to it, and we got ourselves mired by a lack of decisiveness in our in our activity. So we either should have done something or stayed out of it. But we kind of did this middle of the road, not really shaking anything up, and it led us into a complete quagmire. Well, I, I, I do think it's a little bit more than what you say. I think it's a little bit more going on in that country than nothing. I think that with what well, uh, the Turks have done, what the Turks have been doing, a couple of the major cities that have fallen, and what's Russia done? They put an anti-defense system in to shoot down planes. Now, ISIS don't have planes. No, okay? but... Okay, so now, yeah. now, now, wait a minute now. So what are we doing, Mr. Trump? presidential candidate supports Putin, supports what, uh, what they're supposed to do in Russia, and his plans is we go in and, and, uh, 
and, and carpet bomb and, and get rid of ISIS. Is yeah, Al Assad going to really deal with plan. that? And I, I, the problem is, I don't think we have a plan. And I think, to Colin's point earlier, the fact that, that whether you agree with some of the things that Obama has done domestically or not, I don't think there can be much argument that he's made some pretty major missteps on the world stage. Is a misstep keeping you out of war? A misstep is drawing a line in the sand, as Colin indicated. Is a misstep then, keeping you out of war? I'm not sure we kept out of war. How many people are in Iraq right now? And there's more, more, more going to end up being there. How many people killed in the United States every day? Uh, I'll tell you not what. Not as many as killed, in, as killed over there. Whoever's next is going to sure have to that? make yeah. up. Whoever's next is going to have to make up for him doing the idiotic thing of pulling out way too early. He pulled out under Bush's plans. He didn't pull out under his yeah, own plans. I, I, I think we're muddying the situation if we're talking about Iraq here. Look, the reality is this situation, you're right, Ron, there's a lot more going on. And it's not something we're going to fix. If you really want to know what's going on, at the breakup of the Ottoman Empire, France and Britain at the end of World War I arbitrarily drew lines on a map of the Middle East that had nothing to do with ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. They paid Peter to Paul, to, uh, they yeah, robbed yeah. Peter to pay Paul. They, 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 they robbed the Kurds of having a homeland, which, you know, the Kurds are another group that we have sort of supported when we should have supported because they're the only group that is friendly to us. So yes, are we involved? We are involved. We are involved with the Kurds in Syria. We're involved with the Kurds in, in Iraq because there are only Turkey. real allies. And in Turkey, although that puts us in conflict with a NATO ally. True. We, we've, got a, we've got a long road to hoe to get any results over there, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And honestly, to some degree, you know, the argument may be they just need to figure it out for themselves. They've been at this for 2,000 years. Yeah. We're not going to fix it for them until they figure it out on their own. So the best thing is not to be there. Well, the best thing would have been not to remove Saddam in the first place because none of this would have happened. Saddam was a evil we knew and that we controlled inter intimately. Um, we knew if he, the guy moved a wheelbarrow from point A to point B, we knew it. The fact that we went in there with no justification whatsoever is where we went wrong. And everything else is an end result of that. It's, a, it's the domino So the vacuum falling. was created when the statue came down. The vacuum was created when we invaded Iraq. Bush Sr. did the right thing when he, he did, stopped. When he stopped. Because Colin Powell told him to stop. Well, and he knew better himself. He was yeah. he was very savvy in, 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 in international affairs. CIA repairs. background. Exactly. Next up on the flip side, we'll discuss the crippling expense of child support for prisoners in America. We're back in three minutes.